really informal. Um, I don't know. I've not met all of you guys yet. I've met some of you. My name's Scott. So I'm one of the EP guys. Um, my partner's Baz, um, and this is our EP team. Uh, I just wanted to kind of go over just some of the procedures that we do and some of the complications that can happen and some of the worrisome signs that we would want to be notified and then kind of form a more of a, an organized communication pattern back to my team okay. um, just because there has been some things that have been missed um, in translation uh, from patients here. The most extreme example was just, I think, was it a month ago? Less than a month ago, we had a guy that came uh, for routine ablation. I wanted him to stay because he had a big heart history. He refused to stay. I guess he was on BiPAP back here. Um, I didn't. I wasn't notified of that. Um, and then mm -hmm. he went home and actually died at 1:30 in the morning. Oh my gosh! Um, wow. Post ablation, and that sh that kind of stuff shouldn't happen. Not saying that it was anyone's fault. It was ultimately on his fault, on him, because mm -hmm. I went out and talked to him and his wife his family multiple times to try to get him to stay and he left so but I think that there could be a improvement in communication uh, for you know complications and mm -hmm. you know certain signs uh, that, that we need to work on uh, so they our bread and butter procedures are ablations mm -hmm. um, and so what that includes is we use ultrasound go in uh, both uh, veins Baz, does he still do arterial? Yeah, <coughs> he does. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Baz's patients, um, he will have an arterial stick, um, so that leads to a little bit more complications with growing. Um, I just do venous sticks uh, for most ablations, unless it's a VT ablation. Um, and so things that can happen, so we go in through here, feed catheters up into the heart. A lot of times we go transepto, we use a needle to poke across uh, from the right side of the heart, right atrium to the left atrium and then we're using a catheter to burn different places inside the heart. So if you think about from that aspect, um, things that can go wrong, um, if we start at the bottom, so bleeding, complications from the groin, um, anywhere up along the, the veins, uh, the IVC, you can have um, retroperitoneal bleeds, so that would present with like back pain, hypertension. Um, a lot of the times the acute phase your blood pressure will drop and your heart rate won't necessarily go up um, because a lot of our heart patients are on a lot of beta blockers and, and cardism, so you can't necessarily just look at is the heart rate going up in response to the low blood pressure. So so any new low blood pressure um, or sustained low blood pressure, mm -hmm. um, that should get reported to Jenny or one of our MPs. Okay. And then, because I'm gonna be in a case a lot of times and so mm -hmm. with Baz, um, so any new low blood pressure, uh, that's, what, that's what I, my sheet, and I'm going to okay, we'll schedule down so okay. they always know which. Yes, which we doctors. have it through this week. I don't think we have it p after next week. I think I, I told Jordan yeah. about that yesterday. Yeah, I'll bring, I'll just bring it. Perfect. Oh, are you going to bring the monthly schedule? Yeah. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. perfect. So if we see low blood pressure, differentials for that case would be the most common is just dehydration mm -hmm. or um, anesthesia. Unfortunately, this mm -hmm. is a gray area. Sometimes it's just the anesthetic that's wearing off, mm -hmm. um, but sometimes it's you know retroperitoneal bleed. And then the most concerning one is tamponade. Um, I think we had a case, I don't know, a few months ago um, that came back here. They actually presented with ST elevation and the inferior leads. Mm -hmm. So we activated the cath lab post ablation. Mm -hmm. um, and then we ended up cathing them. He didn't have you know a blockage, but he did have uh, tamponade mm. um, and so we had to do an emergent drain and then he had to go into the OR um, and so so hypotension could be something as easy as they just need a fluid bolus um, and so if you guys want to start with a fluid bolus um, that's fine um, you know depending on the, the EF even if the EF slow we can always diary some down the road if that doesn't work um, but I feel like low blood pressure is probably the most ominous sign that we have and so I think that should all get reported to Jenny. What she's probably gonna tell you to do is just to start a bolus um, and just, just go from there. Mm -hmm. But I feel like a lot of the times anesthesia gets called and they prescribe a medicine or do something, but then we don't ever know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't, I'm not aware that one of my patients is hypotensive after an ablation um, and you know, they might start some you know, levo or something, but we should be aware of that because that could, be, that could mean okay. something that we need. It's a lot easier to bring them from here 
to the lab and do a tap versus bringing them up to the floor, letting mm -hmm. them get hypotensive and then bringing them down. Yeah. Um, so, so hypotension could be a big deal. Okay. Um, Watchman procedures, the same hypotension, but then if you see a lot of PVCs, that could mean that the uh, new PVCs, like you know, they haven't been having them and all of a sudden they're having a ton of PVCs. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that Watchman device can dislodge and go down into the ventricle. Um, and so mm -hmm. that would be um, a new sign. Um, most of the time, arrhythmias post-ablation aren't that uncommon. So if we do an AFib ablation, it's not uncommon in the first month or two to have recurrence of AFib. That doesn't mean that was a success or not. So we don't really need to know about the rhythms once they're down here, unless it's you know AFib and you know sustained PVCs for a PVC mm -hmm. ablation. We don't need to necessarily know about that. Okay. Um, but any new change in rhythm, uh, you can call Jenny or the NP. Mm -hmm. Uh, but any of the groin complications, if they're bleeding, things like that, call the um, Jordan mm -hmm. or whoever's on for the EP team. Okay. Um, and then we'll kind of take it from there. Okay. Um, what questions do you guys have? Because I, I, we've never actually had a formal education with you guys. So do you guys run into anything that you're wondering about in certain EP patients? Um, I know it was really helpful yesterday to have Jenny's number for like because it was Watchmen Day yesterday yeah. So that was just super busy and we had a couple I know we were using like Angiomax or whatever for yeah. Yeah. So they were just a little bit more oozy yesterday. I didn't yeah, know if that they was they Yeah, because we don't okay. reverse that. Okay, um, and the only reason we're doing that right now is because there's we have like 40 ACT cartridges to last the entire hospital until gotcha. October. Okay, um, that makes so there's sense. just a national shortage. So we're trying to do something Okay. Different. Just, Perfect. We don't want it that long term because it's like 200 times more expensive than heparin. Gotcha. Gotcha. And you can't reverse it. So. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that was just something we noticed yesterday. So, we're so. turning Angiomax off like at the end of the case mm -hmm. uh, when Doc's done. Mm -hmm. And usually it's like 30 to 45 minutes after that their ACT is probably still high. And that's okay. where you're going to see that oozing. Okay. And then it should start to slow down because mm -hmm. it reverses itself kind of a thing. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, it's so that makes should, should we be starting any um, like flat time over if they're still oozing? <clears throat> over, um, so I close all of mine uh, oh. with, with a little plug. Um, usually I use Vascade mm -hmm. or Angioseal. Um, and so generally it's gonna be a two hour bed rest. If there's some, if it's just a little bit of ooze, I'm not too worried about that. You don't have to restart. If it's like a break bleed, then that restarts the mm -hmm. clock for okay. two hours. Okay. okay. So most of your axis, 95% is venous. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Vaz, he'll always, almost always have an arterial. Yeah, yeah. Vaz will always yes. have an arterial mm -hmm. and right femoral artery. And I'll just do, unless it's a VT ablation, like I said, then I'll do arterial. Okay. Vaz also generally has a longer flat time than Kerber does. Yes, typically. Because of the arterial stick. Yeah. So to clarify, pretty much with ablation or watchman or whatever, low blood pressure, obviously contact somebody, but start with fluids in yeah. the immediate setting because yeah. obviously you know, that pressure is dropping and you got to do something Correct. while you're trying to get a hold yes. of someone Correct. rather mm -hmm. than give a bump of neo or something hold off on that mm -hmm. and yeah. start with fluids even if the ef is low correct okay. mm -hmm. yeah so obviously even if um and if there's a special s situation we'll communicate that with our team and they will communicate with you okay uh, when they bring the patient over like hey we just did that this person's EF is 10, they are extremely fluid overloaded. In that case, we would say something different. Okay. Um, but I, I feel like a lot of the times, what has what I've seen happen is that anesthesia will manage it, mm -hmm. and they don't really know the patient like we do. Correct. We just have catheters in the heart and we're attuned to certain things. So okay. I feel like the, 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 the change in vital signs, like in that, that case I referenced in the first part, um, if you know someone's on BiPAP and they're struggling, um, that should get called to Jenny yeah. or at very minimum our team just because I, I would want to know that. Absolutely. Um, and so, um, you know, the, the change in vital signs, low saturations, mm -hmm. um, and then the, the, the blood pressure are the, the big ones for us. Okay. Awesome. You know, I've shared um, phone numbers of Jenny and Paige with several people. Mm -hmm. If you still need that, please feel free. I think we have that in our doctor probably, uh, little, probably. yeah, so probably phone nice. numbers. With that said, if they're not with us, sometimes we do have NPs from other hospitals that are not as very familiar. Okay. So the most recent thing we ran into is about the communication thing. She got a couple different phone calls and they all mm -hmm. came up as scan likely. So she, mm -hmm. you know, obviously turfed them. So then the solve for that, they 
kind of said is maybe it's best to text them. Okay. If you have yeah, well, number. Yeah. Especially because our I was rounding with her in yeah. the echo room and we don't get service in the echo room. Mm -hmm. That's terrible. Yeah. And so every time we're <laughs> rooms, we yeah. answer it but no one can hear us and then we end up having to get up and walk all the way down the hall just to answer the phone call. We don't know who it is. Okay. Um, so a text message is, is fine. Too. Okay. So if you if you do call and get nobody, I would encourage you to text okay. immediately after. Okay. Just to kind of keep that. Yeah, in good to know. Case you need it. Okay. And then you guys can all have my you guys you can give them all my number too. I think we have okay. it in there too. Yeah. I'm not as helpful because I'm usually scrubbed in a case. Mm -hmm. um, but so I usually rely on these guys. To <laughs> if needed, I'll scrub. I mean, like in, in oh, the case sure. of the stemming, like I scrub yeah, down in the case. Yeah, you need to scrub down. Something emerging, you're like, bye, gotta go. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. But these are all they're they're invasive procedures, and so things can go wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but these days and. You know, an AFib ablation or VT ablation should be pretty routine. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the really sick VT patients, if, if they're if they're on Impella or something, they're going to go straight up to ICU. They go straight up to yeah. ICU yeah. typically, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. yeah. So, and then if you guys have any questions, just feel free to reach out to either me or any of these guys, oh. um, just because I feel like we just need to make the communication stream a little bit better. Yeah. I mean, that's on us too. So. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, just feel free to reach out. Um, if there's something that you want more education on, specifically, um, you know, like anticoagulation, things like that, then just mm -hmm. let us know and we're happy to come over and do some more formal education too. Okay, awesome. Cool. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you, guys you guys so much. I appreciate it.